Turbocharging an engine is a way to force feed the engine more air. In essence, to get more horsepower and torque output from the small engines. However, if the air doesn't make it to the cylinder, that horsepower and torque production is nearly impossible. Join me on this episode of The Trainer and find out how to pinpoint those cold side turbocharged system leaks. Positively pressurizing induction systems allows a turbocharger and or supercharger system to force feed an engine more air. Why is that important? Because force feeding an engine more air makes it more volumetrically efficient. What we can expect as drivers of these vehicles is more torque and horsepower output from these smaller power plants beneath the hood. The job of the turbocharger by way of force feeding the engine is to shove more air into the cylinder than it could normally inhale during natural aspiration. As a result, by force feeding more air into the cylinders and boosting volumetric efficiency, we are able to extract more torque and horsepower from them. However, if the air doesn't make it to the engine, we will not realize that horsepower output necessary the way the engine was designed to run. Now, traditional means of leak detection usually involved a smoke machine. When we are dealing with a power plant that uses natural aspiration, the pistons drawing air across the restriction of the throttle plate generate a negative pressure behind that throttle plate inside the intake manifold. And we refer to that normally as vacuum. As a result of a leak, that vacuum tends to dissipate and in the case of a speed density system will cause manifold absolute pressure values to rise. Now the rising manifold absolute pressure values along with the airflow that was added to the engine causes the engine's RPM to increase. And the PCM will take countermeasures either to close the throttle to reduce engine speed or in older systems reduce idle air control motor count. However when we are dealing with a turbocharger or a supercharger, there's an added layer of complexity. Not only are we dealing with the vacuum leak that I just described, but under heavy acceleration, rather than the intake manifold being exposed to atmospheric pressure due to the open throttle, we now have to consider the fact that the positive displacement of the turbocharger is now going to pressurize that induction system far higher than that of atmospheric pressure boosting its volumetric efficiency. But if a leak occurs, that boost in pressure cannot make its way to the cylinders. So how do we go about discovering these leaks? Again, in years past, we've used smoke machines. A negative characteristic of a smoke machine that tends to be used in a shop atmosphere was designed to function in low pressure systems like that of the evaporative emission system. As a result, if we were to employ that smoke machine to attempt to locate a leak on the cold side of a turbocharged pressurized induction system, we might not find that leak. As a result, we could spend many, many hours trying to find a leak that we're never going to see, requiring much disassembly. However, if we introduce the smoke in a fashion that stresses the system, like it normally would be stressed under normal operating conditions, we are more apt to find that leak. Introducing smoke from a pressurized smoke machine will help make that happen. In the case of an induction system leak, preliminarily discovered through scan tool analysis, we are guided by the results of our test to begin to locate a leak in the pressurized induction system, otherwise stated cold side of the turbocharger from the compressor wheel leading to the cylinders. However, as mentioned earlier, locating these leaks visually can be a chore, especially if we are dealing with a smoke machine that is not creating positive pressure. So we would typically begin our analysis through a thorough visual inspection on what could be accessed visually under the hood. Next comes component isolation. I removed the turbocharger intercooler and isolated it from the rest of the system. 
Isolating a component means sealing it off from atmospheric pressure and introducing pressurized smoke. With initiation of the pressurized smoke machine, actual pressure can be monitored utilizing this digital scale. Since pressure is managed automatically by the machine itself, we don't have to worry about overcharging the system and can focus on looking for the leak. As you can see, once pressure begins to build in the system to nearly 15 pounds per square inch, otherwise stated the normal operating conditions that the engine would be experiencing on the road under heavy throttling, smoke can be seen leaving the port of the MAP sensor. Being able to visually locate a leak prior to disassembly is absolutely crucial to efficiency with cold side turbocharged system leak analysis. Having access to a tool like the pressurized smoke machine makes that job far more easier. When a tool like the 43066 digital dual smoke machine from Mastercool is used properly and logically, streamlined diagnostics is possible. Completing an analytical test drive while gathering the appropriate data will allow a technician to first decide which direction to head in, whether or not there's a leak present and under what conditions that leak seems to show itself in the scan data. Utilizing that information to decide on pinpointed testing using component isolation, we are able to easily locate a leak on the cold side of the pressurized induction system by way of introducing pressurized smoke. I hope this episode was able to shed some light on how to preliminary locate cold side turbocharger system leaks and have that lead you to pinpoint testing, all with ease and efficiency. I'm Brandon Steckler, Technical Editor Motor Age Magazine, and I thank you for joining me on this episode of The Trainer. Thank <laughs> you.